What up y'all, that girl Cress, and I am here to share with you a story time, kinda, sorta, not really, but really just to give a little story about a girl named Cress. So without further ado, let's get into it. So for those who don't know, I am biracial. My father is black and my mother is white. I was born in Frankfurt, Germany because my parents, well, my father was in the army. My parents met in Lawton, Oklahoma in 1970 and he was stationed in Frankfurt, Germany for a couple of years. So that's where they moved to. Um, after that relationship did not work out, my mother met my stepfather or actually kind of met him when she was married to my dad. <laughs> She met my stepdad and um, moved back to the U.S. And that is where they got married and moved to Alexandria, Virginia, because he was still in the Army as well. My stepfather and my mother had four children under me. Uh, and my father got into a relationship with someone else and had two additional children, a boy and a girl, and they were in San Diego. Um... The interesting part of my story is that I did not know that my stepdad was my stepdad. I grew up thinking that he was my biological father until the age of 13. At the age of 13 on New Year's Eve, he and my mother decided that was the time that they would tell me that I was not biologically his daughter and that my biological father was black. In addition, um, my stepfather was a minister and we just happened to be on our way to the New Year's Eve wake service. Um, that is the fast version of a very long life. Holy cow, that's making me cry. <laughs> um, life was very interesting, to say the least. My stepfather was a minister. Um, he was a preacher of a couple of churches. We um, lived a lot of different places because I, I don't even know why. <laughs> I honestly have no reason. We moved from Virginia to Missouri to Oklahoma. And in Oklahoma, I, we've covered the state. We lived in so many little towns. And the challenging part was that we were always in places that were very racist. Although you see how light skinned I am right now living in those places, I was very dark because I live in San Francisco now. So the sun is not very hot, but living in Oklahoma and Missouri, there were summers and those summers were very hot. So I was very, very brown skin. And my mother is very, very fair skin as a white lady. And my stepfather was brown, but not quite as brown as I was. And I did not know what, I never talked to people or knew what step parenting was. I didn't even know that that was, that was something that existed. So at no time did I expect to hear that he was not my biological father. Um, they sat me and my sister, who was two years younger than I, down on New Year's Eve on our way to a church program and said that um, they were recalling a encounter with a man who had a motorcycle that I remembered sort of meeting 
and stating that he had come to visit me because I was his daughter. And due to the circumstances of my stepfather's life, they could not tell his family that I was not his biological child. And so began the story of lies that we had. Um, my stepfather was not the nicest person ever. Um, because of what I had to endure in my family, um, that was the reason why I moved to California at the age of 15. I was one month before the age of 15. I moved to California November 14th, and I turned 15 December 14th. So um, I could tell a million stories of the life that I lived. Uh, maybe one day, maybe one day. Uh, so in short, um, not knowing that you are biracial and by biracial, I mean black and white because being Puerto Rican and white to me was not a big deal. It, it, I have to say that I never considered ethnicity an issue until I found out that I was black. And the reason for that is that um, I will never forget, um, we moved from Missouri to Oklahoma when I was starting the fifth grade. And I remember standing at the bus stop, waiting for the, the local school bus to pick the group of us up. And this girl turned to me who was white and she says, how does it feel to be black? And I had no idea what she was talking about. I grew up in very, very white situations. I, until the fifth grade, do not recall ever knowing or seeing a black person. And so when she said that to me, I had no earthly idea what that meant. And I was like, what are you talking about? She says, oh, you know, being black, how does it feel to be black? And I was like, I'm not black. I'm Puerto Rican and white. She was like, no, you're black. I'm like, no, I'm Puerto Rican and white. And she was like, it's sad to say, I'm sad to say that someone else would have to tell you that you were black and you wouldn't know it for yourself. And I remember going home, telling my mom and my stepdad that this girl called me black. And my stepdad said, what would you do if you found out you were black? And I'm like, I wouldn't do anything, like, but I'm not. And he said, no, but how would you feel? And I was like, I wouldn't feel any kind of way because I'm not. And for me, I, now at my age, I sit here and think about the innocence of the person who said those words. The innocence of the child who came home to say that they were told they were black by someone else. Someone else was able to say, you are black. And I didn't even know it. Um, It was about two years after that is when I found out that I was black. So that tells you how long I was living that lie. I remember that school year, that same school year, that was the fifth grade. I met my first three black people and I can tell you their names are Yolanda, Steven, and Daryl. And, oh, I don't know, it was four. Yolanda, it was four black people that I met that year. And I also had a black teacher. My teacher's name was Mrs. Crump. And the four black people I met was Yolanda, 
Stephen, Daryl, and Vicenio Jones. Oh my gosh. He was my boyfriend. I don't even know what a boyfriend was, but I had a super crush on him. Have no idea whatever happened to him, but I just remembered him stealing my heart. Mrs. Crump was this, whoo, she was intense. I was so scared of her. I had never met anyone so intense. And I remember she used to like snap her gum and talk to us with, she had like the most perfect straight teeth, but she had this, oh my gosh, she had this persona, this energy that demanded respect. And if you even asked a crazy question, she was looking at you crazy like, what? Are you talking crazy in my class? And I was like, oh my gosh. And you guys have no clue how scary I was. Zero clue. Anyways, um, fifth grade, Martin Luther King, fifth year center in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. School now no longer exists, so that's why I can give you all that. <laughs> Anyways, um, so um, that is the start of That Girl, Chris, and uh, more to come. Definitely have more stories to share of growing up black in a very white world. Anyways. Till the next time, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget, like and subscribe to my channel to get some more good, good stories of a girl named Chris growing up in a very white world. Till next time, guys. Deuces.